Welcome to Art History with Jackie. Today, we will be talking about Louise Bourgeois. Louise Bourgeois is a French-American artist known for her large-scale sculpture and installation art. She used her art as her own kind of therapy to work through trauma she experienced as a child. A little about the artist. Bourgeois was born in 1911 in Paris. Her parents owned a gallery that dealt mainly in antique tapestries. Bourgeois went to the Sorbonne University in 1930 to study math and geometry. However, when her mother passed away, Bourgeois abandoned this path to study art. She opened a print shop next door to her father's tapestry gallery, which is where she met her husband, Robert Goldwater. Soon after they married, they moved to New York. Bourgeois struggled to become recognized in America and found it difficult to enter the exhibition world. She created work from junkyard scraps and driftwood that she used to carve into sculptures. She painted over the wood and then employed nails to create holes and scratches to imply vulnerability and pain. In 1954, Bourgeois joined the Ab American Abstract Artists Group, where she met renowned artists such as Barnett Newman, Willem de Kooning, and Mark Rothko. As part of this group, Bourgeois began to develop more artistic confidence. She moved away from upright wood structures to work in marble, plaster, and bronze as she played with ideas of vulnerability and loss of control. This was a turning point for her art. Bourgeois described her artistic journey as a sequence beginning with the fear of falling, which transformed into the art of falling, and eventually became the art of hanging in there. In 1958, Bourgeois and her husband moved into a townhouse in Chelsea, where she lived and worked for the rest of her life. Eventually, they bought the townhouse next door in order to expand her studio space. Though nowadays everyone regales Bourgeois as a feminist artist, at the time she rejected this idea. That being said, her subject was often the feminine. Works such as Femme Maison, Torso Self-Portrait, and The Arc of Hysteria all depict the female body. For example, Femme Maison is a series of paintings in which Bourgeois explores the relationship of a woman and the home. She looks at gender stereotypes and the societal requirements of women to be homemakers and child carers. As she progressed in her career, her imagery began to explore the relationship between men and women and the emotional impact this may have on a childhood, specifically her own. With the rise of feminine, feminism, her work found a wider audience. Bourgeois was always a well-respected artist, but she rose to immense fame after her first MoMA retrospective in 1982, when she was 71. This was the first retrospective of a female artist at the museum. During this exhibition's run, she gave a now infamous interview with Art Forum, in which she revealed trauma from her past for the first time in her career. She revealed that the imagery in her sculptures was wholly autobiographical, meaning it was all about her and her past. She shared with the world that she obsessively relived her discovering, as a child, that her teenage governess was her father's live-in mistress. She worked through her parental issues through her art. For example, Destruction of the Father is an exploration of the power dominance of father and his offspring. It is a flesh-toned installation in a soft and womb-like room. The viewer enters the installation and are made to feel as though they have entered into the aftermath of a crime. The abstract children have rebelled, murdered, and eaten their father. Another of Bourgeois' most famous works are her maman, or mother in French. These giant spider sculptures have earned her the name Spider Woman. While they are often viewed as quite scary pieces to her viewers, Bourgeois has noted that she created them with the idea of her mother watching over her and protecting her. These sculptures allude to the strength of the mother with metaphors of spinning, weaving, nurture, and protection. Louise Bourgeois was celebrated for her examination of gender stereotypes and societal structures, all done through an autobiographical lens. She continues to be an influence on contemporary sculptors and installation artists. Learn more about the artist at these links. Thanks, and see you next week.